There have been a number of questions about the code to uh, do the Pythagorean triples. Um, a lot of folks are, are doing pretty well getting just the first row, but then kind of tripping up on how to do the remaining rows on the input. This piece of code you see on the screen right here actually is a is a pretty good piece of code. And it really only has one small flaw. Um, but if we start up at the top, we have the row number, uh, variable, start row, end row. We set the start row and end row to 1 and 8. We have the three variables for inputting our three values that we're going to read from the sheet. We read the three values from the sheet. Um, and then we have a for loop that will loop around. It reads out of memory the a, b, and c and checks to see if it's a Pythagorean triple. And if it is, it puts into cells 1, 4 the yes and, and if. And, you know, there's a couple of issues here with this, but I want to focus on just this for loop. Now, I want you to notice that the A, B, and C is outside of the for loop, and that needs to be fixed because in the instructions, the A, B, and C were part of the if, and that all needs to be inside the for loop. Uh, but at the same time, uh, let's just go ahead and look at this for loop. Now, the for loop is basically taking a variable, row number, and it's changing that variable from start row to end row. And, and that's what we see in the box here. As the loop goes around, row number has the value of 1, then the value of 2, 3, and so on, until it hits 8. And every time we go around the loop, it changes by the 1. So a couple of questions would need to be asked. It says, you know, where in this code here, where is the value for the row in that code? So, you know, you look around and you say to yourself, where is the value for the row that I might currently be on in my spreadsheet? Well, we know the row number is referring to the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, but where in our code are we actually referring to a particular row on the sheet? Well, we know that the cells keyword allows us to refer to particular locations on the sheet. So in this code, that's really the only thing in this code that's actually referring to the spreadsheet itself. So if that's the case, then we can we can kind of focus here on the cells. So where is cells referring to the row? Well, looking at that, you'll notice it says cells 1, 4. Well, the 1 stands for something and the 4 stands for something. Well, the 1 stands for the row and the 4 stands for the column. So what do we need to change in this code so that we're putting the yes into the correct row on the sheet? Well, in this case, we're only putting the word yes into row 1 every time because that 1 is never changing. So the question you have to then ask yourself is, well, what do I have that's changing from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 and so on. Well, you only have one thing in this piece of code that's changing from 1 to 8. And those are exactly the values you want to use here in your cells. So that's pretty much how you would kind of think about that. Now, again, as a reminder, you do need to take the A, B, and C. And notice it's also got a row value 1, row value 1, row value 1. And that needs to be inside your for loop so that the row value 1 can also be changed inside the for loop. So probably you need to do that just after the beginning of the for loop and just before your if statement so that you have the correct a, b, and c values. Give that a shot. Thanks.